is what I recommend, and this is what I did. And you all are a more body type, but the same body type. So is Sean, so is Kevin. And you know, that's just the way it is. The best Olympians have been mesomorphic body type. Frank Zane, a little bit more ectomorphic. You know, but hey, he bought a package that whipped a lot of tail. Yeah, you know, I right. So what happens since your body fat, you were then striking discipline with your natural genetics. So your last competition was when? Okay, you never done. I'll check you out when you come to the booth there, okay? I always look at the abs to measure. If you got abs, we could. <laughs> if that be the case, <laughs> that be the case, if you got abs, you could. If that be the case, you want to, you should be about 9% body fat. If you're 9% body fat and you look to get ready for a show, I recommend at least 20 weeks away. Sometimes 20. 25 weeks away from the show. Thereby, you're slowly redistributing and not dropping any muscle. So in that slow process, you're able to lower that body fat. And so you're talking four weeks out from the show, man, you're on cruise control. You shouldn't be worried about trying to fix anything. You're just about tweaking at that particular time. So I generally train around 15 to 20 pounds over my last competition weight or what should be competition weight. And I worked in all seasons to get that 15 to 20 pounds as crisp as possible. So I never had to go on one of these crazy programs. I never will recall, forget, 1983, my first Mr. Olympia, I peaked at 243. Arnold saw me in the gym and he said, Lee, I can't believe how big you are and how defined you are, but guess what? Three weeks later with the Mr. Olympia competition, I went from 243 down to two. 33. Didn't know what was happening. Well, because I stayed within striking distance and my metabolism went on like so, I started to discountabilize my own body. So the next year, instead of training on this set amount of carbs and staying within this particular number, I increased my calories as I got close to competition because my body group was feeding on 3,000 calories like it was only 2,000. But I had the notes to, to go back to. So I kept the calories high and slowly increased them as I got closer to the show. And I went in the next Mr. Olympia, 1984, at 243. Won a dollar on the show, but guess what? I was 243 a year before that. But I didn't know exactly what was going on. But if you stay with the striking distance, you can control what's happening. You don't have to eat like a bird and train like a horse. Is that again? What is it? You, have to eat like a bear and train like a horse. you can't eat. You can't eat like a bird and train like a horse. Like a bird and train like a horse. That's right. That's bird. old wisdom. I like that. Yeah. Old. Why do you have to see old? <laughs> you know, old school. See, you have to see old school. 1983. You were beaten by a five foot seven, hundred ninety pound bodybuilder, former senior Yeah. Yep. And that was the last time you lost on stage. You've now been retired 23 years. It's been. And so what was the heaviest that you competed in the Mr. Olympia? Was that 91 or? That was in Italy. Mm -hmm. I weighed 256. In 1989. Yeah, they go, oh, that's too big. That's baby weight now. And Lebrada could have been 190 pounds, thought he should beat you. Right. But he thought he should beat you. What do you think about that? I mean, I could have ate him. You know, put some bread into it. I'm bringing Lebrada next to her. So. You know? We'll have a rebuttal from me, Lebrada next year. <laughs> Okay, any other questions?